Okay, let's go live and we should be live right now. Nice. Welcome. Yesterday wasn't a good day. In case you missed it, go watch it and have some fun because I got lost in part two. Uh, let's hope that today is a better day. Um, yeah, so let me put the link in chat and let me bring up chat here. Hey Smap UK, welcome. Let's pin that message for people who want to play along. You'll lie today. Yeah, I've been told that before actually. A friend of mine also said that I would lie today. So yeah, let's, let's see. I've uh, made myself a cappuccino. So yesterday it got all cold near the end and I barely drank it. So I'll try to drink a bit from it today and enjoy it more. That's it. Let's see. Day 10, cathode ray tube. Oh, CRT. Okay. You avoid the ropes, plunge into the river and swim to shore. The elves yell something about meeting back up with them upriver, but the river is too loud to tell exactly what they're saying. They finish crossing the bridge and disappear from view. Situ situations like this must be why the elves prioritize getting the communication system on your handheld device working. You pull, out, uh, you pull it out of your pack, but the amount of water slowly draining from a big crack in its screen tells you it probably won't be of much immediate use. Unless, that is, you can design a replacement for the device video system. It seems to be some sort of cathode ray tube screen on a, uh, and simple CPU that are both driven by a precise clock circuit. The clock circuit ticks at a constant rate, each tick is called a cycle. Start by figuring out the signal being sent by the CPU. Oh, is this gonna paint the picture? That'll be cool. Uh, let's see, the CPU has a single register, X, which starts with the value one. It supports only two instructions. Add X, V, it takes two cycles to complete. After two cycles, the X register increases by the value V. V can be negative, okay. Noob takes one cycle to complete. It has no other effect. Okay, so an add x takes two cycle, a noob one cycle. That'll be good to know. Let's copy paste this already because this is the kind of stuff. If you forget small stuff like that, you get off by one errors. I'm sure of it. Let's see, the CPU uses these instructions in a program, your puzzle input to somehow tell the screen what to draw. Consider the following small program. And I assume this will be like RGB values uh, and every time you have a noob, you put a pixel and you shift it over once. So maybe we get to, to OCR the, the end. But I'm, I'm getting way ahead of myself. And yes, I like stuff like this. Let's see. At the end of the first cycle, the noob instruction begins execution. During the first cycle, X is 1. After the first cycle, the noob instruction uh, finishes execution and doing nothing. At the start, okay, so it starts at one. Let's also, uh, X starts at one. After the first cycle, the noob instruction finishes execution doing nothing. At the start of the second cycle, the add X3 instruction begins execution. During the second cycle, add X is still one. During the third cycle, X is still one. And after the third cycle, the add X3 instruction finishes executing, setting X to three. Yeah. Okay. At the start of the fourth cycle, the add X minus five instruction begins. It's still four, then it's still four, but after that it becomes minus five. So there's like an in-between state. So basically it says it takes two uh, cycles, but basically it only happens on the third, because if you, yeah, let's see how they, how they deal with that. During the fifth cycle, the access and after fifth cycle, the addict instruction finishes execution. Okay, so let's see. Uh, update at the end of cycle. So, um, add x takes two, but only readable on third. So basically it takes three cycles <laughs> for it to happen. You just don't count the third. Um, bum, 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 bum. Okay. 
Maybe you can learn something by looking at the value of the X register throughout the execution. For now, consider the signal strength, the cycle number multiplied by the value of the X register. During the 20th cycle and every 40 cycles after that, it is during the 20, 40, 140, okay? Okay, uh, start at cycle 20, pull every 40. <clears throat> so there's a, a test program. The interesting signal strengths can be determined as following. During the 20th cycle, the X register has the value 21. Okay. Okay, and, and let's see. The first cycle is the noob, right? So this counts as one, this is cycle three, right? Uh, one, this is two and three, and then this becomes four, right? Yes, okay. So at cycle six, it's the value is uh, minus one. At cycle five, okay, so all indexes are one based. Okay. And then you do, okay, that times the value, and then you sum that, okay. Okay, so let's start coding. Um, and I'm pretty sure that I want to do the test input here first. So let's copy day zero, and it becomes day 10. Should prefix them with a zero so that uh, they are sorted alphabetically. <laughs> uh, what I'll do here is input is and I'll override the input that is downloaded just so that it uh, override actual input with with test input and I'll bump up the zoom. Okay, so we have a cons. Uh, string noobs uh, hmm. noob. and basically we can split by space and if it's one or two then we know what to do right uh, but yeah let's just write it out for now at x cd is at x okay so we do var instructions is input to uh, input up two lines. No, not to lower two lines. Okay. Um, int cycle is one. Int uh, report start is twenty. And report interval is 40. Okay. Let me think. Um, so we do for each. String instruction get instructions. So we do string uh, instruction parts is yes, instruction split and we do by space. If instruction parts length is one, loop else. Add x, okay. Um, <clears throat> so every time we increase the cycle, um, bom, 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 bom. let's do a dictionary of uh, int int uh, cycle values is new blah. So we'll keep track of the special ones. Um, mm 
maybe I'll do something crazier to make things easier. Minus report start. So let's see if we. That might make it easier to uh, do the reporting, but yeah, let's see. Um, if it's noob, we just increase the cycle. Uh, we should probably test if cycle uh, percent report interval is zero at value. Um, let me think. Uh, so then we have cycle values of add cycle comma, and then we have uh, x and x is one. Okay. Um, We can just do it like this, actually. Same here. We increment it once, we increment it again. Um, basically, we could do this as an else if. Because if we have to report, we don't uh, get another report interval after that. Um, so if this one triggers a report, this one does it again. And then we actually increase x after that. Uh, so we do x plus equals uh, int.parse uh, instruction parts one. All right. Yeah, we do the check. We increment the cycles. We add the values if we want, and then we do that. Um, so now we do console the right line. Uh, I can do it for each bar report and report uh, cycle values. Console the right line. And now we have report uh, key plus uh, that will the report start and then we have report value okay let's make sure that we run day 10 and let's see what this spits out okay get the code wrong screen this one let's see 21 19 okay here here we're off by one it says 18 but we have 17 and then we have 30 but it says 21 okay then we are correct again with 16 and 18 so that is interesting how does that happen so that means that we still we are reporting wrongly let me see um, that the case let me see if this is the correct one uh, 19 21 19 18 21 16 18. Ah, okay so yeah I did 1 minus 20 but I should just start at minus 20 so that is my issue now we need to make sure that we also do the uh, calculation there um, so this one becomes uh, 
uh, report report dot value times uh, my report dot key. Okay, let's do int actual cycle actual cycle of this is this the key plus the report start and then value is actual cycle times report value right uh, let's also keep a sum uh, long sum zero l local sum is zero l so then we do <coughs> Sum, local sum equals to this, and then we do sum plus equals local sum, and then we have um, bum, 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 sum. Answer. No. Thirteen one forty. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So now run it against the real input and I keep switching. I have so many screens open. <laughs> so now we don't bypass this. So let's do it. Let's run this. Let me get this value. Woohoo! Part one done. That's not bad. Let's go continue to part two. Let's make games. Hey, welcome. Nice of you to, to hang around. Uh, I've pinned the link to Advent of Code that we're doing today. Um, if you are not aware, Advent of Code is a really nice programming challenge that occurs once a year, starts December 1st, runs till December 25th with uh, a challenge every day with two parts and it, it's really fun. And you can also go back to previous years to do them. I really look forward to it every time. So yeah, if you're in, in any way into programming, you'll love this. Let's see, part two. It seems like the X register controls the horizontal position of a sprite. Specifically, the sprite is a three pixels wide, uh, is three pixels wide and the X register sets the horizontal position of the middle of that sprite. In this system, there's no such thing as a vertical position. If the sprite's horizontal position puts a pixel where the C or T is currently drawing, then those pixels will be drawn. Okay. You count the pixels on the C or T. 40 wide, 6 high. Okay, let's note that down because we will need that. Uh, 40 wide, uh, 6 high. Uh, 3 wide, 3 pixel wide sprite sets middle value. Uh, let's not save that. Uh, let's see. The CRT, screen, the CRT screen draws a top row of pixels left to right, then the row below that, and so on. The leftmost pixel in each row is in position 0. And the rightmost pixel in each row is position 39. Okay. Uh, let's see. Like the CPU, the CRT is tied closely to the clock circuit. The CRT draws a single pixel during each cycle, representing each pixel of the screen as a hash. Okay, here are the cycles during which the first and the last pixel in each row are drawn. Cycle 1, cycle 30, okay. So by careful timing, the CPU instructions and the CRT drawing operations, you should be able to determine whether the sprite is visible. Hey Luke, thanks for stopping by. I just finished part one, so that's nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, uh, yeah. You should be able to determine whether the sprite is visible the instant each pixel is drawn. If the sprite is positioned such that one of its three pixels is the pixel currently being drawn, the screen produces a lit pixel. Otherwise, the screen leaves the pixel dark. The first few pixels on the larger example above are drawn as followed. Sprite position, okay, start cycle one, begin executing, add one, draws a pixel position zero, current CRT row, okay. During cycle two, CRT draws a pixel in position one, 
add an X. Okay. Minus one draws a pixel position two. Ah, okay. I I'm starting to get it now. So it starts here. So because it starts at value one, that is the zero based index <laughs> on that thing. Okay. And so if the cycle matches up, then you draw it. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see. Begin executing add minus one, c2 does pixel. So yeah, then it's blank because it's still here. And after a few steps, does another one, then it goes there. Ah, okay. This is an, this will be an interesting one to write like a generator for to draw stuff out. Uh, c2 does. I, I think I get the idea. I wonder if there's uh, there's one that goes over it. Let's see. Allowing the program to run to completion causes the CAT to produce the following image. Render the image given by your program. What eight capital letters appear on your CAT? Okay, so that is that is always funny and, and nice to do. Uh, and I remember from previous years that I had like a um, a black square. Let me see. I had like uh, ASCII characters to easily block out which one it was. And of course I can't find it now. Ah, here. Filled and empty. That works. So I'll just take that. And that makes it even easier to read. Um, So let's put that as constants here. Boom, boom. Okay. You're looking for day 13 last year. Yeah, that might be. Where did I get it from? I, I don't even remember where I copied it off. I took day 20. Let's see what I did for day 13 last year. I might have done the same. Nope. Or maybe I have it in line here. Oh yeah, see, I have I have it in line here as well. So yeah, I uh, with the alt code. So let me just paste it in here in case you want it. It's it's useful. <laughs> so you can copy paste that and save it for later use. It's because it really made the the screen at the console output that Microsoft uses a lot more readable than doing hashes and dots. Um, okay. So let's just uh, bring this over to part two for now. Um, this is interesting. Let me let me read it again because basically it will draw one each cycle, right? Yes. And it will actually overlap draw. So. That is funny. Um, let me see. So basically what we want to know is um, we have a function that takes in uh, an int, gives out a bool uh, in range x. it takes two ints and basically it's like um, hmm, actually what happens they probably don't make it a 0 or 40 or 39 index let me see I used to say it makes it easy to read yeah it's great um, I, I'm just wondering if they position it on the edge does it flow to the next one or is there never a edge value there? That, that's the one thing that I wonder. Let's see. Uh, controls the horizontal position of the sprite. Blah, 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 blah. Sets the middle. 
the system, there's no such thing as a vertical position. If the sprite's horizontal position puts it pixel where to see uh, here, you can uh, yes, draws, blah, blah, blah. Like this is closely tied to the clock circuit, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what I'm always wondering is if the index is either 0 or 39, does one pixel flow over to the next line? And I wonder if that happens, but yeah. Let's, let's just assume that it doesn't right now. And, and take that into account. Um, let's see. Two, 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 two. Um, So basically, the row is a uh, cycle divided by. Oh no, uh, <clears throat> uh, int sprite row int uh, sprite call. And then we have uh, action update. Right, plus. Why not? And this will do um, sprite row is uh, x divided by, um, in this case, it's report interval because that is also the. Um, what do you call it? That's the the pixel width. Uh, const int CRT width is 40. Const int CRT height is 6. Let's make sure that we. Uh, I wonder if it's like that, if it overflows and then goes back. Um. Or that it just goes out of bounds. Let's try both. Let's not go, let's not account for this. So this might be bigger than that is actually possible. Um, so because we're dealing with ints, if we do either 0 to thir four, uh, 39 divided by 40, it becomes 0, so the 0 row index. 40 to 79 will be index 1, etc. So the index truncation that happens when you divide will help us here to get the row. Uh, and sprite call will be actually uh, x, uh, percentage so modulus uh, CRT width right or basically X minus uh, sprite row times CRT width that would also do the same which might be faster Right. Once again, read the instructions carefully. <laughs> Thanks for the warning. Um, let's read that again. <laughs> Middle of that sprite. Yes. I don't see why you warned me, but we'll, we'll know. I'll just fail and find out later. Um, so yeah, every time X changes, we need to call this. 
or basically have this inlined. Let's just do that. So that should help. Um, this. Uh, bum, ba -dum, ba -bum. So now that we don't care at the instruction, uh, at the, the cycle values, uh, let's see. Instruction part, blah blah blah. Uh, basically, every cycle we need to print something now. So all of this goes out of the window. So new. Uh, let's see. Begins adding there. Yeah, in this case, I need to draw before I increment. So basically, if um, cycle minus x math.apps smaller equal to 1. No, that's not correct. I need to figure out what the row and uh, column is for the cycle. Okay, so let's do uh, int uh, draw row is zero, draw call is zero. We can actually remove the whole cycle thing. Um, <coughs> Because basically we do um, if uh, sprite row equals draw row and math.apps uh, sprite call minus draw call smaller equal one, then we set uh, the value. Uh, let's see, CRT pixels, uh, cycle, I, I, I can still do cycle. Pixel index zero, let's do that. I under-engineered part one, that helped me a lot for part two. <laughs> so I can do, uh, let's see, pixel index. Does this if pixel index parameter equal to last pixel index pixel index zero? Okay, um, const int last pixel index is CRT width times CRT height minus one. Sure. Like that. Uh, sprite drop, blah, blah, blah. So this will we'll do that. That is good. Mm. So need to increase uh, if draw call uh, if plus plus draw call larger or equal to CRT width draw call zero uh, draw row uh, if plus plus draw row larger equal to CRT height. Draw row zero. 
So this should probably be a helper function, so action uh, next pixel like this. I should probably also just do this if plus plus pixel index. Uh, just do this entire thing and just increment it here. If plus plus pixel index like that, and then we remove that here, and then we call next pixel. <clears throat> okay. Bum, bum, bum. Actually, we could just do this every time because that's what we need to do. <laughs> Let's see. Invalid expression term uh, like that. So, like that. That's correct. Basically, we call next pixel. We do that here as well. We do it twice. And then we add that. Um, and basically, now we do uh, for int i, uh, y is uh, bum, 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 zero y smaller than crt height increment y for int x is 0 x smaller than crt width increment x int index is uh, 0 I just could have done that here. Uh, do, 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 do. Never mind. Um, bum, 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 bum. Console. Right. <laughs> Let me think. Um, where did we record it? CRT pixels. Okay. Index plus X. Oh, yeah. uh, filled. I think that one is it, right? Let me see if this uh, this is correct. No. Okay. Let's go back to the start. Bum, bum, bum. That's a nice pattern. Let me see. Uh, bum, 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 bum. It's also like it's, it's. I think I have an issue somewhere with uh, how I build up the indexes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because it's two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven. That's a pattern that we need. I have racing stripes for some reason. So yeah, let's see. Um, uh, 
let me go back to my code and see what I'm doing wrong here. Um, So let me check. The first one that I draw is empty, then it's filled. That is weird because the first one, it should be zero compared to one. All right, sprite row is zero, draw row is zero, sprite call is one, and draw call is zero. So this one should be true. All right, okay. So my problem might be that I wrap around at the end. Do I wrap around in the end? Because at some point I end up with uh, pixel index zero. Let me see, that happens in my, yes, here. So I probably shouldn't do this. Let's see what happens when I do that. That should at least let the first one be filled, right? Okay, so then I still have something weird here though. Um, mm -hmm. See if I remove that as well. No. Let's put in a, instead of empty, let me just put in a dot here just to see if I still have those indexes. Yeah, so those indexes are filled, so that's not the issue. Okay. Um, so Basically, I do something where I wrap around. And that is not correct. Let me see. Let me read it again. It seems like the actor register controls the horizontal position of a sprite. Yes. The X register sets the horizontal position of the middle of that sprite. In this system, there's no such thing as a vertical position. Ah, wait. Um, if the horizontal position puts a pixel where the CRT is currently drawn, then this pixel will be drawn. I think... I think I know... Because basically, for the cycle... Yeah. So I wonder if after 240 it goes back to here, that should mean that it does that. Let's see. But I probably also don't need to worry about uh, overflowing the X value and just treat it as is, it will just only, only be an X, uh, the draw column, right? We never set a draw row. Uh, wait. Uh, let me see the pixel index. Uh,
Yeah, this one will always go on and that is good. I just wonder, like that. Um, that's right row. So the thing that I did with the sprite row is wrong because there's no such thing as a sprite row. It's always just the column. So I should only do this. So don't need to do this, it's just always that, I think. Close, no cigar. Uh, let me see. Oh yeah, now I need to convert that back to a local, uh, yeah. I think this should be correct. Um, let me just write it out for now. So the right line. Uh, so now we have. Uh, uh, let's see. Draw row, comma draw call. X is X. Um, oh yeah, and I also need to do uh, this is just X because also the sprite call we don't do anything with that anymore, <coughs> right? So that is like this uh, X mineral, okay. Let's print this out. Close. Let's see. Draw call X or X, uh, and then we have uh, draw call. Uh, so let's just see what it spits out and compare that to the input here. Let's just debug this for a bit. And I should probably also update what it draws. again when I look at what it does here that seems correct right two 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 and then it does streams of three so yeah that's correct so why is my output <laughs> drawing off let's see um, For each uh, pixel in 
Uh, CRT pixels. It's weird that this wasn't right for some reason. Oh, I'm, I'm an idiot. Jesus Christ. <sighs> uh, yeah. Because for every row we need to have the full width, width and then print it out. Uh, give key. And it didn't add the last index because, okay, so after that, it just needs to do next pixel, okay. That's interesting. Why doesn't do the doesn't it do the last one? Because now we have two thirty nine. So draw is false. Okay. Pixel index is two. Wait, what? That's why, uh, because this is all already minus one. Jesus. And now it should already have the 240, right? Okay. So let's see. So yeah, this is the same pattern I think that it spits out here. So two, three, four, five, six, okay. Who got there in the end? Jesus Christ. I always make it so hard on myself. <laughs> um, let's don't override the actual input and see what it tries to tells, uh, tell us. So it is R-K-A-Z-A-G-B-R, -A -A right? R K A Z A G B R. Okay. So <clears throat> I might be. Let's just submit this, but let's also write an OCR engine. All right? Okay. Woohoo! We completed it. So now for the fun stuff. Um, Let's build an OCR engine. <clears throat> so, um, for int i is zero, i smaller than uh, CRT with increment i. Um, Let's do that. Um, for int y is zero, y smaller than CRT height, increment y. And let's just rename this x. 
So now we can do uh, bool all empty is false. Uh, no, it's true. And now we can do if um, bom, 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 bom. let's see um, CRT pixels uh, pixel index we can do pixel index is uh, row index start index okay we do row start index is uh, and we need to swap these actually uh, never mind let's just let's just do it in line here pixel index is uh, y times uh, CRT width plus X pixel index uh, all, all empty is false break right here we do uh, if all empty ah, it's already defined somewhere okay we just reuse the pixel index there um, so if it's all empty we have a separate character so we can do um, we can do the same here We build a nested loop here. And then we go for uh, sub y. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing in a bit. Sub x. And we start sub x at last empty call plus one smaller than um, x actually now we increment it and then we do this whole thing Pixel index is, and now we do the same, except we use sub y and sub x. And we can say console.right line new character found. Please tell me what character this is. And then we do console read line uh, read char actually. I can do read line string character is on that. Uh, yes. And now we can build a mapping. So uh, let's build a Let's see how we can best map this because um, we can also just do this as a string, by the way. Uh, or a, an array of characters like this. Um, or, yeah, let's just do a. Um, 
first need to build up the, the de definition. And this is, by the way, a bool multi-dimensional array. Um, character data is new. Okay. And this will be uh, CRT. CRT height. So we can do uh, dun, dun, dun. no, we can do it as a sorry, I'm just uh, let's do it differently. But let's do it with a string builder as B is new string builder, and we just make this a string because it can be multi-line and we can map it out and if we don't have it already we can just um, what do you call it if we don't have it already can write it to the console at once and ask what it is so that's actually better uh, we do this after so now we do uh, sb.append and what we append is this Then we do uh, sb.appendLine, empty like that. And now we can do if uh, OCR try get value uh, as string is to string. Like this, okay. Out char uh, match, and then we do OCR dot add as string comma character. All right now we do um, string builder sb result using this. And basically, we can do uh, we can do actually match is that match. So well, if we are here, match always exists and is set. So we do that append match console right line result. SB results to string. Okay, so now we should have an OCR engine that will let us um, have the answer in code as well. Oh, yeah, what I forgot is to actually print it out. So I need to do console right line and then console dot right line a string so now we can tell it r or uppercase r ah, i need to update the last index so after this uh, last empty call becomes x R, this is a K, this is an A, this is a Z, this is a J, this is a B. Cool. And now it skipped the repeating letters because we built an index for that. And we can actually copy paste the answer like that. So this is the fun way to do it, at least in my opinion. So, and just like that, you built yourself an OCR engine. <laughs> That you can train and uh, yeah, it's really not that hard and really fun to do. Huh. Let's see, I added mine to the Discord. Let's see in the Discord what you did. So did any of you build an OCR engine for this as well? I love building stuff like that. Uh, day 10. Let's see, cathode ray YouTube, uh, cathode ray tube. 
Ah, I'm drinking my uh, cappuccino. Oh, let's also paste it here in the chat so that other people can read along if they want. I like that approach. I might build my OCR later. I was going to do it last year. Yeah, I've built it a few times uh, in the past. So once you know how to do it, it's really not that hard anymore. I built a CPU in my solution. <laughs> oh, were you thinking there will be more registers or something? Let's see. Um, bum, 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 load instruction. New CPU mode signal strength. <laughs> uh, maybe you maybe think back to the the int code days. Cycle is cycle check sorry. cycle check interval. Okay. Trying to find, ah, here's your CPU. Jesus. Let's see. Instruction number is zero, so you don't start at one. Hmm. This is my refactored version. I was able to remove stuff I didn't need. Okay. Okay. I'm having a bit of trouble following because I'm trying to see like where you do the uh, the cycle increment and just make sure that you check it after that. But maybe I'll look at it later once more. But yeah, it looks uh, like you were prepared for something big after this. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, today was fun. I like this one. Uh, I ran into a bit of issues at part two, but it was fun to, to finish it in the end and build a small little OCR engine as well. So yeah, thanks for keeping me company and uh, 